Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Read Through the Bible with Elder Linda. So glad you joined me. We have a really good lesson today. And if you, uh, this is your first time joining us here, we read the scripture together. We make sure we understand it and we make application to our lives. And I post a new video by Wednesday of every week. Um, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel called Read Through the Bible with Elder Linda, you will be notified when, um, uh, every time the video is posted. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask or to submit your comments um, on the uh, comments section on YouTube or on Facebook. So last week we were in Matthew chapter 24. We finished Matthew. Uh, we, we read verse 15 through 51. And we talked about the great tribulation, the coming of the Son of Man, and the parable of the fig tree. Uh, we also talked about that no one knows the day or the hour that uh, Christ will return. Then we talked about the faithful and the evil servant. What would happen if you are faithful and what happens if you are not faithful? Well, this week we're going to be on Matthew chapter 25. And Matthew chapter 25 is a continuation of chapter 24 because this is still Jesus teaching on uh, the Mount of Olives. Um, and both of these chapters go together. We, you know, we divided the chapters so we can understand them, uh, better, but initially they were, they were together and not divided. But yeah, so chapter 25 is a continuation of chapter 24. And this is still Jesus' final teaching, um, final, the fifth discourse that he's, that's recorded, main discourse is recorded in Matthew, uh, and in this lesson on chapter, in chapter 25, we're going to talk about a parable of the 10 virgins. Uh, one translation called them the 10 bridesmaids. We're going to talk about the parable of the three servants that were given talents. And we're going to talk about the final judgment. Amen. Amen. And just remember, this is still Tuesday. We're, we're, we're working through the, uh, the Holy Week, the last week of Jesus' uh, life here on this earth. Uh, so this is Tuesday. He's going to be crucified on Friday, and he's going to be resurrected the following Sunday. But this is still on Tuesday. So let's just start with a word of prayer as we get into our lesson. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory. We ask that you would come in and be the teacher. Holy Spirit, that you would just take over. Show us those things, Lord, that we've not seen. Teach us, oh God, you are the teacher. Teach us, Holy Spirit, that we might understand your word. I pray for all those that are listening, all those that will listen. Lord, that you would soften their hearts, Lord God, and open their understanding that they might see you, God, that they might see something they've not seen before. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so let's just start in um, Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read the first 13 verses. It says, uh, the parable of the ten bridesmaids. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was de delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. So we have 10 virgins or 10 bridesmaids and five of them uh, brought extra oil and the other five did not. So they call them five wise and five is foolish. Verse six, at midnight, they were aroused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. And then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, 
open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. Mm. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. So basically Jesus just told us what that whole parable was all about. Uh, we wouldn't really need to say a whole bunch about it. He just told us, keep watch because you don't know when I'm coming back. I'm going to return and you have to be ready. But let's just, just read it a little bit. Some of the things we want to bring out to the notes that I made. Um, and again, it said virgin. So a virgin is just an unmarried, unmarried girl. So these are 10 unmarried women. Five were foolish, five were wise. Uh, the foolish ones did not have oil in their lamp. But I want you to notice that they were all invited to the wedding. Jesus is not a respecter of persons. The call goes out to everyone. Everyone gets the same opportunity. But some did not make the proper preparations. Others will submit to God and allow him to prepare them for the wedding day. So you have some that's going to submit and allow him to prepare us for his return because Jesus is coming back. Some are going to say yes to him and some will just go through the motions and appear to be ready. We don't want to do that. You don't want to be one that's faking it to make it that, that really don't have a relationship with the Lord. Uh, a person that just goes to church on Sunday because it's fine going to church and that's good and we're supposed to go to church. But you have to know that just by going to church does not make you belong to Jesus. You have to give your heart to him. You have to say yes to him. You have to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Not those exact words, but that that intimate, that, that kind of uh, repentance uh, where you are just Return, turning away from everything that you've done and giving yourself to him. This is what you need to do in order to have him as part of your life and have your life to change. All the virgins uh, looked the same until it was actually time to meet the bridegroom. So again, we can look, you can look one way on the outside, but if he's not in your heart, okay, God looks on the heart. He knows your heart. You can't fool him. Okay, it tells us that they all fell asleep waiting on him. Then at midnight came the cry that the bridegroom cometh. So according to the, the Quest Study Bible, it was customary for the weddings to start late in the evening. And one of the commentaries was explaining it how the, the in the Jewish uh for the Jewish weddings, your parents would actually um uh, uh Put you together with with somebody else they would they would set your wedding they would decide who you're going to marry and then uh about a year that's why you're young even and then about a year before it's time for you to get married they'll have an, an official betrothal where you actually say vows um according to this commentator that uh you actually say your vows but you still don't have any contact with your with the with the uh groom until um a year later. So during this year, the groom is preparing for the bride. He's making a place for her. And then after a year, when the, when the father of the groom sees that, okay, he's made the appropriate uh, preparations for his bride, then he'll okay the wedding, the wedding feast. So the groom will go to the bride's house and they will actually make a procession all the way through the community with, uh, with their lamps lit, and because it's usually in the evening time, so it's night, they need some light with their lamps lit. Uh, and they go all the way back to the groom's house. And there they will have a feast for about seven days. And during this feast, uh, this feast lasts for seven days. And after seven days, then the bride and groom will consummate their marriage. I know it, it's a lot, a little bit different than ours. But this is why they needed lamps and oil in their lamps because they were going to have to go out at night to meet him and they had to have light. So what can we learn from this is that we will not be able to uh, lend people our oil. Um, what does that oil represent? Preparation. Oil is that which keeps your lamp burning. So what keeps you burning? What keeps your light burning? Your relationship with God. You can't lend your relationship to God with anybody. 
nobody can borrow your relationship. I can't uh, say, well, I'm going to heaven because my mom loves Jesus. No, I have to have a relationship with Jesus. And you have to have your own relationship. You can't borrow that from anybody. You have to have your own. So that's part of being ready. The foolish ran out of time. Uh, he came while they were out trying to buy oil. The wise went into the wedding and the door was shut. God is serious about this. He means business. That door will be shut. And when, when they returned, it was too late. He said, I don't know you. You do not want to hear those words from Jesus saying, I don't know you. I never had any kind of uh, communion with you. Um, when you see the word no in the Old Testament, no means to have union. Uh, they would say, uh, Adam knew his wife, even she bare a son. You know, they said Adam knew his wife. So usually when you see that word no, it means to have union with. It's something, it's a close relationship. It's, you know, they had intercourse, they had a child. So God wants us to know him. He wants us to be intimate with him. And the only way we're going to do that is by spending time with him, waking up in the morning and talking to him, talking to him through the, during the day, uh, singing songs, you know, with him on your mind, telling him to be Lord of your life, telling him to take the reins, let him lead you and guide you. Amen. It, it doesn't, it, you know, he, he's not, it's not difficult. It's just yielding to him, allowing him to come in. And, and you know, and I, and I hate to just assume that everybody's listening has already accepted Christ because that's the first step. You have to accept Christ into your heart. And once you accept him into your heart, start establishing your relationship with him by reading your Bible, talking to him in the morning, talk to him before you go to bed at night, just fall in love with Jesus. Amen. It'll be the best thing you ever did. Amen. We sing a song like that. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. So uh, let's read the next section is verses 14 through 30. It's a parable of the talents. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Hmm. Verse 19. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with him, came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Verse 22, the servant who had received two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest. I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibility. Responsibilities. Let's celebrate. Verse 24. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth and look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So he's not getting the same response as the other two. He's being called wicked and lazy because the other two went to work. He hid it. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I would have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, 
Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who you who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even that little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant out into outer darkness, where he, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so what are we learning? What are we learning here? We're learning here that we all have gifts and talents. Basically, this is what this is. We all have gifts and talents. God has given to each one of us uh, gifts and talents. And he wants us to use our gifts and talents for his glory and for his kingdom. And this, uh, the talents that he have here is interesting enough is, um, this, it was a lot of money. He gave, he left his service with a lot of money. When you add up these numbers, the one that he gave, and this is according to uh, the Nelson Study Bible. Uh, the Nelson Study Bible said a talent was a large sum of money, about 6,000 denarii, D-N-A-R-I. Okay, keep now keep that in mind. A talent is 6,000 denarii. One denarii represented one day's wage for a working man of about, you know, a low estimate, and then this is our estimates, about $50. So 6000 times $50 would have been $300,000. One talent was worth three, approximately $300,000. Okay, these are the numbers based on the Nelson Study Bible's calculations. So we're going to go with that because it gives us an idea of, of how much money these servants were given. So the one with the five talents was given one million five hundred thousand in our money. If you talk about dollars, so he was given like one million five hundred thousand dollars, and he doubled that to three million dollars. the The servant that had the two talents was given six hundred thousand, and he doubled that to one million two hundred thousand. So he doubled his. Now the servant with the one uh, that was given the one talent had three hundred thousand, and that's what he had. He just buried it in the ground. Okay. So this this was a lot of money. But just remember that uh, Ephesians chapter four verse uh, verse eleven and twelve tells us that God has given us gifts. And our gifts are supposed to be used for his kingdom. Uh, if you if there's something that God has given you, don't leave it on the shelf because he's given it to us to, to advance his kingdom. Uh, your gifts and talents are not just for you. Uh, in Ephesians, it tells us that our gifts were given to grow up the church until we reach perfection. We have not reached perfection yet, so it's going to be a while that these gifts are going to be in use and needed. And it said in verse 19 to 21 that the master returned after a long time and called his servants to see what they had done with his money. So there's going to be a reckoning. God's going to ask you on judgment day, what did you do with what I gave you? And you want to be able to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You, you used what I gave you for my glory. You didn't hide it. You didn't belittle it, uh, but you used it for my glory. And the one that hid it and didn't use it at all, even what he had was taken away from him. And it was given to the one who already had much. Uh, he gave it to the one that was putting it to use. They were putting it to use. Give it to, give it to the one that had 10, 10 talents. So, you know, don't, don't bury the moral we want to learn. Don't, don't bury your talents. Use them for God's glory. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Amen. So use our gifts to advance the kingdom. So this parable tells us that if we don't use it, 
You can lose it. Based on this parable, you can lose what gifts you have if you don't use them. Amen? Because this servant was thrown out and he said there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know if he was if he was thrown out, out completely uh, because these were, these are, these are Christian people. God gives us gifts. So, or if he just missed out on rewards, didn't get any rewards. I don't know, but I don't want to find out. So just share your gifts with the kingdom and you won't ever have to find out what it means if you don't uh, use your gifts for his glory. Amen. Amen. Let's just read this last part. It's about the final judgment, verses uh, 31 through 46. It says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Hmm. So we're talking about the final judgment. There's going to be a separation of sheep and goats. He will place the sheep at the right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, to the sheep, come you, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you, you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones, these sheep are going to say, will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and, and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left, those are the goats, and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me and they will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous will go into eternal life. Wow. So that's going to be a final judgment coming on this earth. And you don't want to be in the goat section. So what is this? What is it? What can we learn from this tip from this parable? Well, first of all, in verse 32, it says there's a final judgment of all the nations. Uh sheep on, on the on the right hand and the goats on the left. And uh, God said in verse 34, it said that then the king says, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. So what does that tell us? That God has been preparing a place for us since the since he first created, made creation. He wanted to, he wanted us to have a special place. And when you said the word brethren, he said, at least you what you've done to my brother. In the Greek, it means a connective particle near or remote, a, a brother. And we are his brothers and sisters. And the Christians, he's the first, the scripture says he's the firstborn among many brethren. So all of those that have come to know Christ are his brothers and sisters. And we have to be willing to help those that God brings across our path. God does not ask us to help everybody in the world because you can't. You, he, I mean, he, God, God is has common sense. God is a smart God. He knows, and so who He's telling us to help are those that He has allowed to cross our path. If God allows something for you to see a need, someone once told me, if you see a need, meet the need. 
Because if you're seeing it, if, if God is showing it to you, it must be because he wants you to do something about it. So don't miss those opportunities to bless his people. Don't miss those opportunities for you to give. And no, and no matter what area they might it might come in. Don't just put it off and say, well, let somebody else do it. Because if, if it comes to your mind, it's usually because God wants you to, uh, to do something about it. Amen? And he knows when you can and when you can't. He knows your heart. So whatever we do for one of God's people, we did it for God. We must give, we must help people, and visit those in need. In verse 41, first it says, so those who never helped anyone will be cursed and thrown into everlasting fire with the devil. So, and, and usually those, those are people that have not even accepted Christ. So they don't even have a, a heart to want to help people. Uh, and they'll be thrown into everlasting darkness. So to sum it all up with this entire chapter, the 10 virgins... When we talked about the five wise and five foolish, what can we learn from that? Well, we need to make sure that we are prepared when Jesus comes back. Have oil in your lamp. Do everything you need to do. Be obedient. Listen to his voice. Get to know him so that when he comes back, we're ready. And he won't be able to say to us, I never knew you because he will know us because we would have spent plenty of time, intimate time, getting to know him. Amen. The parable about the talents. Use your gifts to advance the kingdom of God. And, and don't say you don't have any gifts. We all have gifts. We read the scripture that said he's given us all gifts. Amen. Use your gifts for the kingdom. And some people say, well, I don't know what gifting I have. Well, if you just pause and think about it, usually your gifting is that thing that you love to do more than anything. You'd rather do that more than anything. That's usually a good sign that that's your gift. Use your gift for the kingdom. And if you don't know your gift, you ask God to show you what gifts, what gifts he's given you. Because he's given you some gifts because he said he has. And then the third part of that is um, help other people. He said that he was, uh, he was hungry, he was thirsty, he was a stranger, he was naked, he was sick, and he was in prison. And, and you didn't help me. So we don't want that said of us. We want to be able to say... Him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, any needs that he bring across our path, we want to be able to just uh, be able to help people. Help hurting people. Amen. Because that's what he called us to do. He called us, us to be his hands and his feet in this earth. He chose to use us. He doesn't have to because he could snap his fingers and do it all himself if he wanted to. But he chose to use us to be his hands, to be his feet, to embrace people to uh to to show love on people he wants to use us for that amen amen so we're going to stop there that's the end of that uh, chapter 25 but anybody who has not accepted christ into your heart uh we just read about what happens to people who have not given uh their heart to the lord please please go on my channel uh read through the bible elder lender and there is a uh playlist with two videos on that playlist one is called The Sinner's Prayer. The other one is called Teaching About Salvation. And those two videos will teach you about Jesus and show you why you need Jesus. Amen. Amen. So go on there and please uh, accept him into your heart and turn your life over to him today. Amen. Amen. Let's just close with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We praise you. We honor you. We give you all the glory. We glorify you today. We ask, Lord God, that you would meet all those needs that are out there, those that have no one to turn to, those that feel like they're alone. Father, help, help them to feel your presence, oh God. Help, have them to know that you are nigh them, even in their heart and in their mouth, that you're right there to meet all their needs. We ask, Lord God, that you would bless us even tonight as we uh, even... As we sleep, oh God, that you will cover each one of us, cover every home that's represented. Father, we praise you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you and I will see you next week.